and now we'll discuss the impact on our community colleges. By design, our community college system is to be funded equally from three separate sources, from state funding, from tuition and fee revenues, and from local property taxes. As state funding for community colleges has stagnated, the remaining two sources must, inc must increase their contributions, leading to increased tuition costs and increased property taxes. Most colleges can only increase tuition so much. As community colleges are intended to be more affordable, colleges are then forced to rely heavily, heavily on property taxes or by cutting back on programs and services. This year, the General Assembly passed a budget with one of the largest increases to community colleges in years, approximately $14 million. The governor's veto takes away $10 million from the community colleges this year. This includes the elimination of the $3 million Student Success Grant Program, which is an existing program that, is, that provides assistance to the students with disabilities. This chart shows area community colleges and the amount they lose under the governor's veto, and it's also included in your packet of materials. On to healthcare and social services. The governor claims his cuts to the FY08 budget are to ensure he can pay for a statewide health care program. However, according to an analysis by the Center for Tax and Budget Accountability, nearly 30% of the governor's reductions were taken to health care. These reductions include $500,000 for a grant to the Rush Alzheimer Disease Center. One in 10 people over 65, and nearly half of those over 85 have Alzheimer's disease, and this funding would have helped further the research of this disease. Over $1.7 million for chiropractic services through the Medicaid program. This service was completely vetoed from the Medicaid program. 80% of adults will experience an episode of lower back pain in their lifetime, and 50% of the U.S. working age population will suffer from chronic lower back pain. Oftentimes, Chiropractors provide better care at less cost when compared to care provided by general physicians or through the emergency room. $40 million to hospital services was cut through the, pro through the Medicaid program. This cut could have covered 30,000 children in the All Kids program or over 16,000 parents in the Family Care program. $50 million for long-term care. One of the state's major expenditures for the elderly is providing long-term care for lower-income seniors. With the baby boom generation reaching retirement age and the continued advancements in medicine, the cost of providing services to the elderly has grown significantly. But instead of recognizing these pressures, the governor cut $15 million that the General Assembly appropriated. $3 million was eliminated for 21 new school-based health centers Without this funding, these centers will be unable to open. It is also important to note that this funding was part of the governor's original health care package. Over $2.2 million was eliminated for the LaSalle's Veterans Home, which would have provided care to 80 veterans. $1.65 million was cut from increased care and testing for newborns. $700,000 was cut from HIV AIDS, education, medicine, and prevention programs. $400 million was eliminated for sickle cell anemia research. $500,000 was cut for nursing school grants. And $700,000 was cut to provide medical education programs for people living in rural areas. Over the past few years, community-based developmental disability and substance abuse providers have been faced with the rising cost of gasoline and electricity, the cost of providing care, and the increased cost in health insurance premiums. They've also recently been hit with the increase in the minimum wage. Despite these constantly rising costs, the state has not provided them with an increase in more than two years. To help with these rising costs, the General Assembly provided a modest cost of doing business increase. However, the governor has vetoed these increases. This veto especially hurts the substance abuse service providers, 
which have already placed people in need of treatment on waiting lists. Mental health service providers care for the mentally ill who have no means to care for themselves, and the state pays these businesses for their services. The state has recently moved away from a flat grant method of payment to a new method, which is based on paying a fee for the services which have been provided. While this new payment methodology, methodology provides greater accountability for the use of state funds, it has made some mental health service providers unviable and in danger of closure. The General Assembly recognizes that these businesses are important to the communities they serve. So, to prevent them from closing, $8 million was included in this year's budget. This money has become more commonly referred to as the safety net because it will save the most vulnerable facilities from closing. The governor vetoed the entire $8 million amount, which leaves the real possibility that some mental health service providers may close unless this, unless this funding is restored. Autism diagnoses have increased by 172% in the 1990s and occur in one out of every 150 births. The General Assembly included $10 million in the FY08 budget to address this growing crisis. This funding would have resulted in the largest system of autism care in the country and would have engaged over 27 agencies and universities dedicated to creating a strong system of care. Sadly, the governor cut $5 million from this program, one half of their appropriation. Public health and safety. <coughs> in a time of increasing violence on our streets and in our schools, the governor eliminated nearly $7 million for programs administered by state police, local police, and community organizations. This money is used to fund a variety of assistance programs created to fight gun violence, domestic violence, and to promote so safer neighborhoods. $250,000 was eliminated for a capital punishment reform study committee to look at how Illinois will address capital punishment reform. Since Governor Ryan put a moratorium on the death penalty, Illinois has done little to address its capital punishment system. $240,000 was eliminated for the Downstate Innocence Project. To date, the Innocence Project has exonerated 207 people in the United States through DNA testing, including 15 who served time on death row. The Illinois Emergency Management Agency prepares for, responds to, and leads recovery efforts in times of emergency, disasters, and acts of terrorism. The governor eliminated a $125,000 appropriation to the Illinois Law Enforcement Alarm System. This system coordinates multi-departmental police activities, such as emergency response teams. For example, the system organized and supported the deployment of over 300 officers from 112 state, county, and municipal law enforcement agencies in Illinois for Hurricane Katrina relief efforts. In fact, the alarm system was even awarded a certificate of, of appreciation by the governor for these relief efforts. 